Hey guys, um, I'll obviously start with I'll just address the quarterback situation. So um, as everyone's probably heard by now, Jake, uh, we've named Jake uh, Hayner the starting quarterback for this game. Um, feel like uh, after going through the first couple days of the week, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, and against this particular team and this particular game plan, we feel like Jake gives us uh, the best chance to win. Uh, certainly no indictment on, uh, at all against Spencer. I think Spencer's doing a great job. I think Spencer has a great, bright future ahead of him. Uh, as in regards to Derek, uh, he's doing really well with the concussion protocol. Looks like everything's going to be uh, above board there, all good. Um, we are still going to determine whether or not he'll be the backup for the game or potentially the emergency third. So we're not ruling Derek out for this game at the moment. Um, we'll kind of see how he's, his hand is progressing and it is improving. And so we'll let that kind of play out the rest of the week. So we have a couple options there. Uh, because he's on the roster, we can either make him still the backup quarterback, uh, have him active for the game, or make him the emergency third. And so those are those options are still on the table. If he's functional and able to do that, uh, that's 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 a possibility. So I'm um, excited for Jake, and uh, and here we go. That's where we go. What were some of the determining factors for Jake? I mean, they were split in reps during the game, during the week, and so what were some of the determining factors for him? Honestly, without getting too d deep into it, we just felt like you know Jake had a really good couple of days, and he gave us the best chance for this particular game. So Darren. just to be clear on Derek, even if he's active, Jake could be starting. Jake's going to start the game, right. yes. What, what do you mean all good with Derek, like past the concussion protocol? Or yeah, he'd well, have to practice to do that, wouldn't he? He has to, in order to have a um, the final step, he's got to go through a quote-unquote, um, don't quote me on this, actually. No, un, un, <laughs> unquote, unquote, <laughs> yeah, is, uh, is a, is a non-contact practice. So what that entails, uh, that just entails some movement stuff and things like that. So, but he's passed other stages. He's up I, I, as far as I know. He's up. He's passed every step of the way so far. So he's at the final step. The final step would have to be a non-contact movement scenario. Would yep. your guys walk through qualify as that tomorrow? Uh, usually, in, in, as far as I know, in that situation, like Caesar was in that situation last week. He's got to go through a non-contact practice. Again, it's more movement. You know, moving around, getting the. You know, getting your heart rate up and those kinds of things, and making sure there's no nothing. You know, no. But right now he's asymptomatic. Yeah. So we've heard you guys talk about Jake's moxie from time to time. How do his teammates respond to him that you've seen? Yeah, I think the best part about Jake is he he prepares. He and every week he's been here, and every day he's been here, he's prepared as if he was going to be the starter. Uh, and so you know, when you watch one of our practices, if you didn't know any better, if you came to the first Saints practice of your life and watched him operate, he operates a guy, like a guy that's that's been, you know, there before. And so and that that's a that's a credit to his preparation. Uh, it's a credit to how he kind of handles every day, uh, his mindset. And so, you know, that's I think that's kind of the moxie. Uh, you don't feel any different in practice at all whatsoever with him in there. I thought he did a really good job these last three days of operating uh, just in and out of the huddle, the tempo, all those kinds of good things. and. And so hopefully we bring that to the field on Sunday. I, I was asking you this the other day, but you were still playing coy on your decision. Uh, Me? Did, did you? Uh, coy. When you came in, you evaluated tons of things. You changed the locker room things. I mean, did you specifically evaluate the quarterback position and, and make a conscious choice that, that Jay Kaner was – you wanted him to remain the number two, or and you saw some reason for him to be ahead of Spencer at that time. It's really been an ongoing process. Yeah. I mean, even when I wasn't the interim head coach, I I monitored the quarterback. You know, I watched practice every day, just like every you know every other coach. And I I, I as a special teams coach, you get a different view of, of everything. You get a different. You have a more of a team wide view, and so I paid attention to the you know OTAs, training camp, the practices, um, and so I didn't have it predetermined. Jake Hayner is going to be the next guy because I thought Spencer had a really good training camp and I thought he did some really good things in the three games that he started. Um, so I tried to have an open mind this week uh, as we went into this thing. First thing was to make sure you know it's going to be not Derek uh, as the starter, and then you know determine which guy gives us the best chance. But I, I really do believe, and I wasn't I, I wasn't trying to be coy. I really believe that both guys in their own right. Uh, you know, could lead this team just like Spencer did in the last three games. Uh, but there's nothing that Jake, uh, and this, as, as, like I said, there's nothing that Spencer didn't do. He didn't do anything wrong. Uh, I just felt like for this game, Jake gives us the best chance. How has Derek's hand progressed? Uh, it, it's improving every day. Um, Alvin should be yeah. fine. <laughs> uh, Alvin, full practice today. Yesterday was more, you know, I, I know I told you guys on Wednesday I thought he'd be back on Thursday. That was really more my decision, to be honest with you. I thought it was, uh, 
a good idea not to have him uh, go out there. He, he he got pretty sick, and he's but he's much better now. It looks like he's recovered just about 100%. So he was full practice today. He'll have no game designation. He'll be he'll be up and ready to roll. Really, just yesterday was more precautionary, just coming off of a, of a sick day and making sure we're just being safe with it. It's random, but do you have any thoughts yeah. on having like saving the onside kick? Or, you know, they talk about that at the league meetings this week. It, it's come up for the last. You know, I'm in. I'm on that special teams committee, and it's come up the last five years. Um, listen, I think there's different feelings about the onside kick. Uh, I think in the if you could ever have a predictor out there, you kind of want it maybe right around 10%. And if you're hovering around 10%, you probably, you know, I, I'm not big, I'm not really in favor as a special teams guy of, of having a format that allows for a higher percentage because I think you kind of water down what a team just did for four quarters. Uh, I think the current situation is good. I think one of the things we could consider, there's other there's things you can consider, and we've brought that up to the league about changing maybe the, uh, the rules for the kickoff team's alignments or eliminating players out of the setup zone right now you're allowed to have a maximum of nine so for example maybe have eight or maybe for example getting a little more creative with the kickoff formations things like that but other than that i i'm i'm, I'm a fan of the way it is now i'm not a fan whatsoever of the fourth and 15. Uh, and here's the biggest reason the biggest reason that uh people that are against the fourth and 15 is there's no possibility on an onside kick that a foul penalty by the return team could give the kickoff team the ball on a fourth and 15 there's multiple fouls which would extend the drive and give the other team a first down so who wants to lose a game on a hands uh, an errant hands to the face penalty or an illegal contact or defensive holding or a, a late hit on the quarterback all those things are automatic first downs and so I know in theory the fourth and 15 but because of the penalty aspect and because you put your marquee player at risk, the, the quarterback now becomes a player safety issue also on the fourth and 15 because now you're not, you can't throw the ball away. You're not going to slide before the stick. You're not going to run out of bounds, all those things. So it becomes a player safety issue also for the quarterback. So those are the two biggest reasons why uh, I would be and a, and a lot of coaches would be against the fourth and 15. So I think we continue to modify the, 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 the current rule and maybe get a little bit higher tick. I think right now we're three for 41 on the year going into this week, which is like, what, 7% or something like that. But uh, I think we want to be maybe, you know, 10 to 12% would be great. But you never, ever can predict that. Uh, I know that was a long answer. You think, no, you know, you see, I, I've thought about it. I agree with <laughs> that, yeah. I think you guys have uh, attempted three fake punts in the last five games, if I'm not mistaken. Even, even just the, the act of, of going for those, does that, like, maybe plant a seed, like if you were the opposing special teams coordinator, you see the, the frequency of that and have to like then worry about it and yeah. change some things up. Yeah, listen, I'll use, I'll use uh, for example, I'll use the Carolina Panthers, I have Johnny Hecker who's thrown like 25 passes in his career. Like and four against y'all. Yeah, yeah. It, see, it seem, seems like he always throws one against the Saints, right? So um, when you play a team like that, that you know there's the, the possibility of a, of a fake, you're going to see some different, you know. And I think I told you guys when we had faked that punt against um, – Matt Hayball's punting against Carolina. That's something we had rep for a while. The one we rep the other, uh, ran the other day, we had rep for a while. It's just sometimes the situation just doesn't present itself. The, the game, you know, you're really just going to make that call based on how the game's going, the down and distance, the opponent, all those things. And so I know we came up a half yard short the other day. Uh, we kind of lost a couple blocks late. Uh, but that being said, you know, we're always going to have some some stuff up for every game and whether or not it, whether or not the situation arises. So. But it's just, just having an aggressive mentality. Uh, sometimes you're better off leaving your, your offense out there and going for a fourth and medium or a fourth and short. Sometimes if you think you're going to get a certain look, you know, you may you may better be better off running a fake punt. So just all those management decisions kind of, kind of come into it. Everybody good? We got out of the uh, room today. We got into the brave and the elements. So yeah. I tried to tell them to cool the room down. Do well, tried we to... did need to do that before sitting in the Superdome press box. <laughs> All right, appreciate Thank you guys. You Thanks, man. Did you yeah.